In this lesson, we're going to continue our study of resource markets, where firms acquire the resources they need to produce the goods and services that they sell households in the product markets. In previous lessons, we've talked about how demand for labor is determined by the marginal revenue product of labor, and how the supply of labor in a labor market is determined by the wage rate and other factors, such as the wages in competing markets, the barriers to entry into a labor market, and the level of population growth through immigration. In this lesson, I want to focus on perfectly competitive labor markets and determine how an individual firm determines the wage rate it must pay its employees. So we're going to start with some definitions here. In an earlier lesson, we defined marginal revenue product, which is the revenue earned when a firm hires one additional worker. Well, this is marginal resource cost, sometimes called marginal factor cost. So the abbreviation for this term, marginal resource cost, is either MRC or MFC, marginal factor cost or marginal resource cost. This measures the change in a firm's total costs when it hires one additional worker. Marginal resource cost is the change in a firm's total costs when it hires one additional worker. In other words, following a change in the quantity of labor. So if a firm hires one more worker and it has to pay that worker $15 per hour, then the marginal resource cost of that additional worker was $15. On the other hand, if a firm has to raise the wages it paid all of its previous workers in order to hire one additional worker, then the marginal resource cost might be higher than the wage that it has to pay that one additional worker. In a future lesson, we'll talk about wage-making firms, what we call monopsonists. These are employers that have to raise the wages they pay all their workers in order to attract additional workers. But in this lesson, we're not focusing on that situation. Rather, we're looking at a situation in which a large number of firms compete to hire an even larger number of workers. And that, in fact, is the definition of a perfectly competitive employer. So this is a market in which a large number of firms, which are the employers, are competing to hire an even larger number of workers. In other words, every individual employer is a wage taker. This means that an individual firm can hire as many workers as it wants at the market equilibrium wage rate. Each firm is so tiny compared to the total labor market that it has no influence or power over the market wage rate. Now this is basically the resource market version of what we call the perfectly competitive seller in product markets in which each firm is so small that it has no impact over the market price for the good that it is selling. In this case we're talking about hiring workers. Each employer is so small that it has no impact over the price of the resource that it is buying. In the case of labor the price of that resource is the wage rate. So let's look down at our graph here. And before we talk about how an individual employer can maximize its profits when hiring workers, we'll talk about how an individual employer's marginal resource cost is determined. So you'll notice that we're continuing with the example used in our earlier lessons. We're looking at the market for people who work in bakeries. Now we have some assumptions here. Let's assume that in this market there are 100 bakeries providing bread for the entire city. Each bakery employs four workers or bakers, and therefore each bakery is a wage taker. Since there are 100 firms hiring these workers, no individual firm can affect the market wage rate by demanding more workers. So in our graph on the left, we're going to show the market demand, the market demand, which is determined by the marginal revenue product of bakers. And we're going to show the market supply of people willing to work in bakeries. So that's our supply of labor. In our last lesson, we explained how the equilibrium level of employment, which I actually wanted to be 400 here, call that QE, and the equilibrium wage rate was determined by the market demand and supply for labor. So our wage rate, our equilibrium wage rate, is $15. And you can see that in the market as a whole, there are 400 400 bakers employed by 100 bakeries. Each bakery employs on average four workers. So the question is, what does the supply of labor look like for an individual bakery? How does each bakery know what wage it should pay its workers? And does each bakery have to raise the wage that it offers its workers if it wishes to hire more workers? 
So I think you're going to recognize something here from what you might have studied in an earlier unit if you looked at perfectly competitive sellers. We call each individual employer here a perfectly competitive wage-taking employer. In other words, every individual bakery can hire as many bakers as they want at the equilibrium wage rate of $15. So this one bakery is going to employ four workers, but if that bakery wanted to hire a fifth worker, it would not have to raise the wage rate. Notice that the supply of labor is determined by the marginal resource cost. The bakery can hire one more worker at a wage rate of $15. It can hire one more worker beyond that at a wage rate of $15. The marginal resource cost in a perfectly competitive labor market equals the wage rate. Because each employer, each employer is a wage taker. They take the wage that is determined in the market. If the market demand for labor increases or the market supply for labor changes, then the equilibrium wage rate will change. But each individual employer faces a wage rate determined by the market demand and supply for labor. So in an earlier lesson, we also talked about how each individual firm's demand for labor, when aggregated or totaled, equals the market demand for labor. So this individual bakery has a demand for labor represented by its marginal revenue product, which is downward sloping. So the question now is how many workers should each bakery hire? And I think you're gonna recognize some of the theories here. They're very similar to what we studied in earlier units. There is a, what we call the profit maximizing rule of employment. Right here, where the marginal revenue product, in other words, the revenue earned by the last baker hired equals the marginal resource cost. In other words, the cost to the bakery of hiring that baker. And at that quantity of four workers, We'll call this the QPM. This is the profit maximizing. Profit maximizing level of employment. So how do we interpret this rule? For this firm, the last worker hired earned the firm $15 and cost the firm $15. Here we go.